Here we have Sam playing with a cricket. She's about a year and a half old now and she is in wonderful health. She is a happy, happy, happy cat, aren't you Sam? Ah uh, yes, I finally got my trailer repaired and emptied and uh, my dear old Volkswagen. It may make it through one more winter. We'll have to see. Anyway, she's been a good old car and I'll tell you, these Volkswagen diesel Jettas, I got over, uh, I guess, 350,000 kilometers on this engine and uh, it's going to be the bodywork that lets me down. Yep. Anyway, this is Steve Clark reporting for KLAM on September the 12th, Friday evening. It is a wonderful, quiet evening. A few clouds rolling in. We're supposed to get some uh, good solid rain tomorrow. And here is, oh dear my failed biodiesel experiment. Uh, I was going to do this with a friend and it just turned out to be that one extra thing I couldn't find the time for. Although I did collect the oil and now it has to go somewhere. So I just happen to have a friend with a restaurant and uh, they have a fat container out of the back of their uh, store so they kindly said I could dump this canola oil and um, then I can recycle the plastic containers. Anyway, that may come along again. We'll have to see. But there you go. It'll soon be gone. My backyard will be clear. Now this is the hay I just purchased. And uh, it's good hay. And what I'm going to do, you can see I started to dig this back. Uh, I'm going to reline this with hay because um, about four inches of hay will make about one inch of soil and uh, anyway it's a nice way to turn over all of the um, manure and soil and the previous hay that was down there uh, that's what it looks like after a year underground and uh, you can't actually see any on the surface I'm sure they've all buried themselves down but there was some that really excellent worm activity in here and the wooden boards have certainly soaked up all the water. They are, I've checked them, they are soaking wet. Uh, you know, I, there is a couple of cracks here, I'm sure they'll fill with time. I was tempted to think about um, lining this whilst I was digging it back. And the reason I'm not going to line it uh, with some kind of plastic is A, I don't want the plastic to biodegrade into my uh, humus and B you know my experience is when you trap moisture and it's going to get moist you're going to trap moisture behind that plastic when you trap moisture you're just inviting molds and uh, wet rot uh, this at least uh, I know the wood is exposed to the soil but at least the moisture can escape so that's what I'm thinking of, is uh, it'll probably last as long. And so I'm going to save myself that uh, little bit of extra work. And uh, I'm not going to line it. Uh, yeah, when you open the hay bale, you find that it, uh, it just tends to want to naturally separate into uh, what are called flakes. You see there's one, two, three, four flakes there. And uh, I'm doing this about one flake deep all the way over. So you're going to put your hay in and then I'll be uh, shoveling over this uh, wonderful, wonderful, you can't call it soil, this is, this is just humus. This is manure and hay, it's all breaking down. It is absolutely wonderful growing medium, lots of bacteria. And so this one side is done. Just leave enough room there to put. I'm going to top dress with uh, my manure over there, and uh, then of course I'll put a layer of mulch on top of that. As we see what happened last year, you see all this just breaks down. It's wonderful what nature will do if you decide to work hand in hand. 
so I have a week's vacation coming up next week and I will be finishing the garage thankfully I got it all primed uh, I have a friend coming over on Monday is going to help me finish trimming the garlic I have about uh, 1500 bulbs left to go but uh, wow the morning glories have just gone crazy I like to keep a perpetual source of pollen for the bees I know I sound like a broken record on the, the pollinators lettuce is coming along well of course lettuce loves this kind of weather a little bit cooler a little bit wetter uh, I'm starting to see buds form on the uh, broccoli not the broccoli the Brussels sprouts so I'm looking forward to a good crop of Brussels this fall along with the parsnips look at that I got peas growing again they love this kind of weather too and you know I don't know what breed of strawberries these are I'm sure you can see I pan in a little bit there there's still strawberries these are still flowering and still producing and I bet you every day from May up until late September I'm taking a small bowl of strawberries off these plants every day they're beautiful they're sweet uh, you can see that they're uh, fairly large berry and uh, oh this is the kind of thing you get when you have new raised beds so you can see that little hole down there and that is just a gap in the wood and uh, the soil went on top and I guess it packed in when it first got in there and uh, so now as the soil is loosening up it's falling down anyway I kind of expected that for the uh, first couple of years with this we'll see how well the beets are doing okay, more lettuce there more beets here uh, the beans are drying quite nicely and uh, this Cherokee black bean it gives the most gorgeous bean let me see if I can get a few out here these Cherokee black beans these are the beans there you go look at that a beautiful shiny black bean and they're called Cherokee black beans uh, because they're what the Cherokee uh, took with them as their staple when they were forced to march across the Midwest and uh, which of course uh, as we all know sadly thousands died on that march but they took the uh, this black bean because it is such a hardy bean it uh, grows just about anywhere under any condition and it is a prolific producer and so I uh, always put Cherokee black beans back in every year and collect them for trading and uh, soups it's a great soup bean you don't really eat it green so much it's more you like you let that bean dry and uh, yeah you store that away in a jar for uh, winter time Now that is what I call a big sunflower. But anyways, we're definitely looking at a full garden. The potatoes have all uh, died off now, except for a few ones down the end here. Uh, I'm trying to dig up some here. Uh, it's certainly looking like a good crop. But uh, yeah, everything is just starting to slow down. The days are getting a lot shorter. Nights are getting cooler. Uh, they've already had snow in Calgary, Alberta. Uh, three days of wet snow. Right during harvest season, just when you need it. 
and uh, this is actually what I've maintained that would be the big problem with climate change and uh, please rest assured we are going through climate change whatever has induced it whether it is cyclical uh, environmental uh, it really doesn't matter the fact is we are experiencing it and it's creating probably the worst kind of conditions you can think of for farming and that is fickle weather where you won't know what kind of weather you're going to be getting you could be getting a frost in the middle of August in the middle of July right out of nowhere they'll just that uh, jet stream will dips down and boing you'll have a frost and uh, that is not such a incredible statement as I believe it was five years ago Tennessee had I believe it was five days they went down to minus six centigrade in June it was the end of June uh, basically decimated the corn crop there were no nuts or berries or fruit trees all the blossoms were hit and of course we got hit uh, three years ago in Ontario when there was a um, an extraordinarily warm March we had three weeks of weather where we got into 26 degrees and we were loving it and so were the trees uh, they burst into life and we had blossoms on the trees and last week of March actually from March until May we had I think it was 16 killing frosts in between and of course that just decimated the uh, the fruit trees in southern Ontario so uh, this is very very bad news for growing food and this is why I am encouraging everyone to try and uh, have a little bit of food independence because you know if we had a frost if I had some kind of warning I could spray in the morning before the Sun hit the leaves uh, I could cover this stuff probably uh, you know this is small enough that you could actually do something like that with but when you're farming 300 acres you are not going to cover 300 acres overnight so I would encourage absolutely everybody to do a little bit of gardening I know this is maybe a bit larger scale than you might want to start off at but uh, you know you can start small even in planters even balcony planters buckets as long as you've got good drainage you won't get mold in there and uh, grow yourself some tomatoes grow yourself some cu uh, cucumbers H have um, a uh, kitchen herb garden you, know, you can grow that in three or four containers I would encourage everyone to be just a little bit more independent because um, this could be crucial with the kind of weather systems that we are seeing taking place in North America today. Anyway, I hope you have a great weekend. As I said, I will be uh, trimming garlic on Monday with a friend. And of course, I'm going to get a little plug in. The election is coming up, so I will be starting to go door to door, uh, introducing myself and uh, talking a little bit about the issues that we all think are important to us in uh, City of Quarter Lakes in general and Ward 7 in particular and um, we'll talk to you soon. Oh, of course, I should remind you that I will be going down on Tuesday of next week evening and this is the mayoral all candidates meeting at St. Thomas Aquinas and that's on Tuesday evening. Uh, our doors open at 6.30 p.m. Uh, debate starts at 7. And then on Thursday, the 18th, in Bob Cajun, at the Community Center Arena, there will be a public input um, for the uh, secondary aggregate plan. And uh, of course, this is a pretty futile kind of meeting because they've already had the steering committee meeting uh, where they have made all the final decisions so there will be no public input. This is basically a show and tell. Um, personally speaking, I think it's a disgrace. Uh, Lloyd Robertson stood up at, at the council meeting and said that this was a slap in the face of the public to have the steering committee meeting prior to the public meetings. And that steering committee meeting was held on August 27th. So, uh, Yes, I'm very disappointed in the way this is playing out and um, thank goodness these plans have been appealed 
so they are not a done deal regardless of what anybody thinks. This will be open for the next council to deal with and thank goodness for that. Anyway, this is Steve Clark for KLAM signing off and uh, wishing you a wonderful weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.